Good day there. You're watching the Aussie Boom Guru. Um, today I've got a little bit of a fun video because some of you might have noticed the uh, the date today. I thought I'd have a little bit of fun to fit in the character of the date. So what I've done here is I've, I've made a little Revit logo you can see on my screen here. Um, how did I make it? Well, of course, I made my Revit logo using Revit. Um, now, why am I making Revit logos? Well, as most of you know, um, the new version of Revit's coming out quite soon, and I anticipate we're going to get a nice new logo with Revit when it comes out. No. Um, as most of you know, the, the logos have been quite uninspired for a little while. Um, we've had some interesting designs in the past, but I guess maybe this hasn't quite been uh, a high priority feature for the development team for a while. So today we're going to use Revit 2021 and the Autodesk Generative Design tool uh, to generate some new random logos, um, not only to avoid paying a graphic designer, uh, but just also to show you a more abstract way that the Generative Design tool can be used. And um, if Autodesk wants some, some more logos, <laughs> feel free to contact me. I'm happy to, happy to send them to you. Nah, no, just kidding. But let's have a bit of fun and see how the generative design tool can be used in a way that you might not think it can. Let's jump in. Um, so rather than building the script step by step the whole way through, um, what I'm going to do instead is just show you how the script works. Um, because most generative design scripts are actually quite hard to make. It's one thing that the marketing for the tool doesn't always pick up on. Um, you can hit Autodesk. Uh, but in this case, essentially, I'm just generating a logo. So if I run this once, you're going to see a beautiful Revit logo. And it's also going to generate an image as well. So in this case, um, it hasn't shown it just yet. But when I run the generative design tool, you will, in fact, um, see an image get generated. So I'm doing this in a few steps. So I'm actually generating four squares to begin with. So I'm breaking down this into four quadrants. And inside those quadrants, I'm placing a point, which essentially is this point, that point, that point and that point. I'm using a few different areas to control how this works. Um, for example, I'm setting a number first of all, just so the logos know which version of Revit they belong to. In this case, we're making a logo for Revit 2091, um, where I'm sure we'll still all be using Revit and using the computers that can run them, of course, I'm sure. <laughs> We're also setting the thickness of the variable, and also I'm putting in a little joke here, the open letter satisfier, uh, which does something to the logo, which um, should hopefully help um, abide any open letters that might be around at the time of this version of Revit. I've made these all inputs by right-clicking on them and saying, is input. And I'm essentially just taking these forward through some algorithms. One of them is constructing some colors, um, which is going to relate to the open letter satisfier control. <laughs> as well as this, I'm remapping um, some of these points to get them within the range of the size of each quadrant. Um, so I'm making some random numbers and randomizing the location of these four points. And then creating the border, and I'm also creating the square um, as solids. And I'm just taking my points here. Now I'm actually remapping them a little bit. So in this case, I'm bringing them a little bit closer to the center of the quadrant because I don't want the R to be all the way out on the border. Um, so in this case, I've just brought them within about 0.3 of the zero to one range that each point can be placed at, um, just to make it look a little bit more like an R, but it does still have some randomness in how it can be placed. Um, from here, I'm actually drawing the R out of lines. So I'm just constructing it, putting them all together in a list and then extruding them and thickening them into the final R that you see here. So this is that, that R shape there. And then taking these forward, I'm actually measuring the thickness of the elements because I want to see how meaty my Revit logo is because I think that a thicker logo probably is easier to see um, when it's placed on the taskbar. So in this case, um, we're making some new logos this way. Um, as well as this, um, I'm just joining it all together at the end. And what I'm doing here is defining a pixel grid. So underneath the logo, I'm actually placing a set of points. Um, and intersecting this with the logo. And this is going to go and construct me a logo um, in a pixel grid. So I can turn this into an image. Uh, in this case, I am storing these using a remember node, um, just so the script doesn't necessarily have to generate this um, each for each run, um, just to increase the speed of the run of the script. And then I'm just going and finding the, the color at that point. And then also just, uh, in this case, constructing an image from pixels. Um, what I'm also doing is constructing a file path uh, from an object. In this case, you can see that I've just put this into a code block to create the Revit based on the version that it belongs to. And then at the end, I'm just in this case uh, using a gate. So what will happen is the user will press a button which tells the, the logo to be generated from the one that I picked from the generative design study. I am going to show you at the end how you can just get this to pump out like 400 Revit logos. Um, obviously, this is a great way to avoid paying a graphic designer to do all the work for you. Um, so maybe Autodesk might benefit from that. <laughs> but in this case, if I go to generative design, 
and I export the generative design. I've just called this a logo maker. Um, I could probably go on, you know, make a pro collaborate version and put all sorts of features on it, uh, but it won't be that main. Uh, I've also assigned just a little logo to it as well, just a little troll face because we're, we're having a bit of a troll here. I've exported this as a study as well. Um, so now that I've done this, um, I'm also going to go and create an alternative study. In this case, I've built one called the logo maker underscore all. And this is actually going to go and pump out every single logo it makes because I've taken out the gate. So every time the study runs, it's going to be writing an image each time. So that, that's one way you can get the generative design study to just do things as it goes by including that creation as part of the process that Revit and Dynamo run. Um, anyway, let's make some Revit logos. Let's go and improve the, uh, the, the potential logo we'll be seeing in 2022 um, in, in about a week's time probably. So I'm going to go to create study and I should be able to find the two studies that I've created. In this case, the logo maker and the logo maker all. Um, let's just build some logos on their own first and have a look at the generative design engine. So in this case, I'm just going to call this study name, um, make me a logo. And I'm just going to pick the randomized method. I want this to be quite random. Um, I'd rather let the algorithm do most of the fun here. Um, so I'm going to be in this case, uh, variating the thickness of the element. And also I'm going to be dictating the version number. And also, um, as well as this, I'll be just um, giving the script the ability to run the open letter satisfier for me. Um, so you will see what that does um, when I run it. Now I'm just going to create maybe, maybe a 30 new logos for Revit. Um, and I'm just going to put them on a seed of one. So off our study goes. Um, and before you know it, we should see all sorts of logos pop up um, that we can use for future versions of Revit um, to keep everything a little bit more interesting uh, rather than the same old, old logos we're seeing here. So there you go. You can see some are appearing. Now you might have started to notice that some of them are going to be satisfying some open letters. <laughs> in this case, they've got a little bit of color in them. So that can keep people happy. So we can either, we can filter our results based on whether they're satisfying open letters or containing color, or whether they're just the standard old rabbit colors. Um, and we can also do things like check the versions. So we can go to earlier versions here. So I can see, for example, this is Revit 2086 and Revit 2048 and Revit 2126. Um, and as I filter through, we'll find various results that meet various criteria. I can also find just my really, really thick boys to see only the thickest logos that make it through. So for example, this one is for Revit 2763. I'm sure we'll definitely still be using Revit in the next 700 years. <laughs> That's gonna be a, be a lot of versions and hopefully by then the railing tool might work the way we want it to. Um, but if I go to create Revit elements, this is gonna open up the gate and actually go and generate that image by letting the file path through, which will create the image at the end as well. So once this is finished, um, we're actually gonna see our logo. So there we go. Revit 2763 um, has now got a logo available. Um, from here, you could go and convert this to an ICO file. There's a lot of websites that can convert things to icons. Um, right at the end, I might do that. I'll just show you how I typically do it using a fairly shady website. Um, but maybe before that, let's just go and make a whole bunch of logos instead. Let's say we just wanna, we wanna make the next you know, 100 years of Revit in logo form. Um, so in this case, we're just gonna randomize our logos, but I'm gonna use the batch logo maker. I'm gonna randomize it again, and I'm just gonna, in this case, I might just leave the open satisfier um, not in here, but I might say I want all my logos to be nice and colorful. Let's just make, um, say, 20, 20 logos, and I'm going to start generating. So because my gate is no longer here, um, the data is just going to get pumped through each time and just go and write a new logo each time. And we should start to see some some nice, colorful, little satisfying logos pop up that should keep um, should keep those uh, those architects happy that have been complaining a little bit lately. Um, so we can see that all the open letter satisfiers are just one, so there's no filtering condition here, and we can have a look at different versions. I can also sort them based on things as well, so I'm just going to, in this case, sort by thickness. And let's just get a really meaty logo. So in this case, this one's 2243. So we can go and find that one in our results field. Um, that one there. There we go. Beautiful colors too, of course. Um, so I'm going to go and convert this to an ICO file. So I'm just going to go PNG to ICO. And we should be able to find a, uh, a fairly sketchy website that can do this for us. <laughs> in this case, um, I'm just going to click and copy that path. Lots of pictures of me. Um, so 2243, download my ICO file. And let's just take my current version of Revit. Um, in this case, maybe Revit 2021. And I'm just gonna go to its properties and change its icon. Go to my downloads and beautiful. Now we can really tell which version of Revit we're dealing with. And if I unpin Revit 2021, 
I might not be able to change its logo until I until I re repin it after Revit's closed, but let's just shut down Revit 2021 now that it's done its job. We finally found a, a use for generative design. And beautiful, now I can really tell that disgusting colored logo is now Revit 2021. Um, so there we go, we, we finally found a, a way that we can take advantage of generative design for Revit, for Revit. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> the script will be available on my GitHub if you want it as well, um, if you want to make some nice ugly logos for Revit as well. So a bit of a fun video today. Um, I hope that no one took offense from the context of the video. Just poking a bit of fun. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't really used the generative design tool very much for practical purposes. Um, I do tend to use uh, Grasshopper and Rhino for these purposes just because it processes the geometry so much faster. And, and generative design is so dependent upon geometry in most cases. Um, but in this case, you can see we really didn't use that much geometry. We we're mostly just generating image files. So there are definitely use cases for the tool. Um, having said that, I do get a lot of requests to make more videos about generative design using this tool. And whilst I may make some videos on generative design in the future, um, I highly suspect they'll probably be on the Rhino platform instead, especially because now we have Rhino inside. Anyway, um, hope you enjoyed that. And if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. Um, I'll be back to some more serious tutorials uh, next, uh, next, next video and maybe until you know next year in, in April, maybe it'll be more serious till then. Anyway, um, thanks, take care, bye.